welcome to our today's midday encounter from Crowhurst Christian Healing Centre. Welcome to you in the chapel. Welcome to you at home. Um, I'm back to recording in the old fashioned way on my phone rather than with our new system because um, otherwise I would have to keep running over there to, uh, to be doing things. So I can't do that. Um, so back to the old fashioned way and then David is going to uh, put it together to go online later on. So thank you, David. And uh, yeah, welcome. My name's Suzanne, I think you know that by now, one of the chaplains here. And well done for making it today because it is not a day that entices you to come outside, is it? It's wet and windy and, um, well, unless you like rain, a bit unpleasant. <laughs> Although some people really like rain. Anyway, it is quite seasonal and in fact seasons is the, uh, is the thoughts that I want to bring you today. It's the time of year, isn't it, where perhaps we are more acutely aware of the changing of the seasons than perhaps at other times. And as I drive down in the morning, I'm very, very conscious of it because the trees are changing colour, the leaves are falling off the tree, the weather is different, it gets dark and light at different times now. And um, we, you cannot help but notice that we are heading into autumn if we're not there already and winter is just around the corner. And that's just our kind of season of that sort. We have seasons in our lives too and it's something of that nature that I want to to reflect on. I was going home the other day, um, one day last week, and the, the sun had set almost to the point where it disappeared below the horizon. It was just this big golden glow in the, in the sky. And it, the sky was absolutely clear. And the sun shone across the valley where I was um, driving beside. And everything on this side was absolutely golden. It looked like they were truly on fire. The trees were on fire, the hedges were on fire, the fields were on fire. And if I wasn't driving, I'd have stopped and taken a photograph because it, although it probably wouldn't have done it justice. But it was just stunning. I was there at the right time as the sun was at the right place to shine that colour. It was glorious. Glorious. One of the lovely things of autumn is that low sunshine. Mm. But 2020 has been a bit different, hasn't it? Mm. As we are heading towards the end of this year. And as we think about um, lockdown and the time that we've been through, but also the uncertainty that still lies ahead. What's the winter going to be like? What, um, what's going to happen? There's the changing landscape of, it, of employment and unemployment, the changing landscape of finances, perhaps even the changing landscape of health, other seasons that we go through. And I was reminded that at the beginning of lockdown, there was a question or two that was kind of circulating and being asked. And I probably won't get the question quite right, but the question was, what have you started doing during lockdown that you weren't doing before? And are you, will you carry it on afterwards? And what have you stopped doing during lockdown that you were doing before? And in a sense, will you pick that up again? And probably if we were to think about it now, at this point, we would have a much clearer idea of what, that, what those things might have been than we did perhaps at the time when lockdown was so, so fresh and we just started. And you might want to ponder that. What has changed for you? What are some of the things that you were doing but can't do now and would love to do, or actually you're quite glad that you're not doing them anymore? Or what are the things that you are doing that you weren't doing before that are being absolutely delightful for you? Ponder that as we hum our first Hum, which is a song that reflects that really through all the changing scenes of life in trouble and in joy. 
the praises of my God shall still my heart and tongue employ. It's an old hymn, the words are a bit quaint, but there are riches within it. And sometimes I think when you're not actually singing the words, you can appreciate what the words are even more, can't you? So enjoy the words of this lovely hymn. Thanks, Stephen. which one of those verses spoke to you because I'm pretty sure one of them would have done when I read it through this morning the uh, the verse that um, spoke to me I suppose was verse 4 the hosts of God encamp around the dwellings of the just Isn't that a lovely thought he lives around our they encamp around our homes around this place and around many other places across the land. Fear him, ye saints, and you will then have nothing else to fear. Your wants shall be his care. Shall we pray?
Lord, it is true that we go through many seasons in our lives. And some of them are joyful seasons and some of them are very difficult seasons. Some seasons we're glad to see the back of and some we would choose not to end. And Lord, it is true to say that this year for very many people has been a difficult season and continues to be a difficult season. And Father, I want to pray this morning for all who have been affected by this pandemic in whatever way, their health, their strength, their family, their employment, their finances, their business, and many other hidden, unseen things that have been affected. And for some, that change may not be reversed. And so, Father, I pray that you would stretch out your hand to all who are in distress because of what's happened to them this year. And ask, Lord, that your hosts would encamp around them, whether they know you or not. Because whether they know you or not does not change your love for them. And for us sitting here, Lord, we too are in seasons. Lord, I pray for each one in the chapel here and each one listening at home that you would encamp around us too. And that we would know for ourselves that when we fear you in the right sense of that word, then we have nothing else to fear. And your wants shall be our care. I think I said that the wrong way round, but Lord, you know what I mean. Our wants are your care. Thank you, Lord, that even when we get our words muddled up, you know our hearts. And we pray these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. So I'm going to read the very familiar words of Ecclesiastes 3, entitled, A Time for Everything. You've got it on your sheet. If you're here in the chapel, the words will be on the screen for you at home. Or you can just listen, it's up to you. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather them. A time to embrace and a time to, to refrain. And that's the time for us, isn't it? We are refraining from embracing just at this moment. A time to search and a time to give up. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to mend. A time to be silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. What does the worker gain from his toil? I have seen the burden God has laid on men. He has made everything beautiful in its time. He has also set eternity in the hearts of men, yet they cannot fathom 
what God has done from beginning to end. So wherever we are stuck in our particular season, you have eternity in your heart. That must be a flicker of hope, whatever the season. God has placed eternity in your heart. I'm going to read a poem, really, but I'm going to read it slowly as a reflection and just a slight little pause at the end of each line so that you can um, have a chance just to take in that line. And it's a very seasonal poem, so I hope that um, it blesses you and I hope it blesses you at home too. And I don't know who wrote this poem. It was sent to me by a nun, and I suspect she'd written it, but um, she didn't put her name to it. So here it is. Slowly, she celebrated the sacrament of letting go. First, she surrendered her green, then the orange, yellow, and red. Finally, she let go of her brown, shedding her last leaf. She stood silent and empty, stripped there, leaning against the winter sky, she began her vigil of trust. And Jesus said, and why worry about clothing? Think of the flowers growing in the fields, they neither have to work or spin. Yet I assure you that not even Solomon in all his regalia was robed like one of these. Shedding her last leaf, she watched its journey to the ground. She stood in silence, wearing the colour of emptiness. Her branches wandering, how do you give shade with so much gone? And Jesus said, do not be anxious or overly concerned. And then the sacrament of waiting began. The sunrise and sunset watched with tenderness. clothing her with silhouettes. They kept her hope alive. They helped her understand that her vulnerability, her dependence and need, her emptiness, Her readiness to receive were giving her a new kind.
kind of beauty. Every morning and every evening they stood in silence and celebrated together the sacrament of waiting. And Jesus said, Now if that is how God clothes the grass in the field, which is here today, and thrown into the furnace tomorrow, will he not much more look after you? I wonder which of those lines really spoke to you. Maybe the line, she stood silent and empty, stripped bare. Maybe the line, wearing the colour of emptiness. But what about the new kind of beauty that comes from this level of dependence and vulnerability. And of course we know what happens to trees in the spring. And Jesus said, will he not much more look after you? So Father, thank you for this poem, thank you for these words, the sacrament of letting go and the sacrament of waiting. And Lord, these are tough things and we go through these seasons of having to let go, seasons of waiting. When we do feel empty, we feel stripped bare, we wear the colour of emptiness. And we regret all that has gone. And yet, Lord, with eyes to see it and understanding that comes from you, there can be a new kind of beauty. And I pray that for everybody here and all listening online, that they would see a new kind of beauty in the season they're in right now. And thank you for that promise. That God clothes the grass in the field, here today, gone tomorrow, will he not much more look after you? Amen. And our final hum. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Fill me anew. Fill me anew. Thank you, Steve.
So you, may you be filled afresh today, filled anew today, by the Spirit of the living God who has placed eternity in your heart. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace.